Hello, um, my name is Tina Smith. Um, I'm really thankful to Typographics for hosting this conference. Um, I'm really excited that it's all online and uh, open to everyone. Um, and thank you to Sasha and Ellen and Barbara for moderating this and being point people on this conference. Um, and I do want to thank people that have helped me, like Maida Newhouse, my former professor, um, and my team at Google Creative Lab, and my friends Mike and Molly, who were cheerleaders on this. So I'm talking about being type-driven, both in my professional work um, and in my personal work. So I'm a graphic designer and art director. Um, I was born and raised in rural Montana. Um, I'm now based in New York City. I've worked across various disciplines, um, like in studios and editorial and in-house. Um, and I've worked on branding projects and editorial design at the New York Times Magazine. I've worked on packaging for various clients like Target um, and advertising, um, as well as having my own practice of lettering and type design. And I've always really described my work as being type driven. Um, and what that means to me is really like having typography as the central focus of the work that I do. Um, and I find that typography is really like the backbone of communication. Um, and it can really quickly get to the essence of a story or a brand. Um, and when I was putting together this talk and thinking about my work being type driven, um, I was also thinking about how I've come to uh, doing typography as a graphic designer um, and thinking um, I also type driven personally and how type driven could apply to me as a person. So I've been really enamored with typography since I discovered it could be a focus. So in this presentation, I'll go over how I became type driven and how that type driven process uh, kind of manifests in my personal and my client work. Um, so going back to the beginning, I grew up in rural Montana. Uh, this is where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in a town of 200 people. Um, there were not many people my age. So I really learned to occupy myself and kind of self-direct. Um, I didn't really know what graphic design was, um, but I knew from like, just being on the internet and do, like self-directed uh, things that I was doing in, as a teenager, that I, it was what I wanted to do. So I attended Montana State University to study graphic design. Um, and after a few years there, I realized that type could be a focus in a graphic design practice. Um, my professor made a new house, brought in Dana Tanamachi to speak to us at my school. Um, and Dana's work is really this like chalkboard lettering work that's like really textual type that's just all very type focused. And it was the first time I realized that as a graphic designer, like I could potentially focus on typography and seeing her work made me really want to do that kind of work. So this is really the beginning of my story of being type driven. And also around this time, um, that same professor uh, was leading a semester in Italy the following semester. And the entire course was focused on typography. Um, so we drew type by hand and we didn't really use computers much and just were like referencing the forms that we came across. So these are some of my sketchbooks from then. Um, and it was really naive and I had a really loose understanding of the basics, but really just kept going. Um, and we played with ty making type in different ways, like projecting it on castles. Um, and making it out of objects. And really from then on, I started to use type on every project that I could. Um, and I was really interested in the unique expression I had 
difficulty achieving using typefaces. So this is some student work that were, that was some of my first attempts at vector lettering. And I really sought out every resource that I could find. And I found on the internet, there was this really like vibrant type community that shared really generous resources, like people like Jessica Hish, who I really learned a lot from, from like all the kind of free resources that she put out online. Um, and also online, I found out about classes like the ones at the Cooper Union. Um, in 2014, I visited New York City to take a script lettering class from Ken Barber. Um, and just from that one class, I learned a lot and a lot of like missing pieces uh, in my process. And it really took like four years of constant practice before I was kind of satisfied with my uh, lettering work at this time. Um, so these are some resources that helped me along the way uh, at that time. Um, and I was sort of doing more client work um, and I was really kind of like still type driven personally. And there was like a place that I wanted to be with my design work that was more focused on type and a gap that I really wasn't able to cross with client work. And I really felt like I needed more practice in different areas. And so I turned to personal work um, and doing 100 day projects. Um, so I've done two 100 day projects. Uh, the first one was in 2015. Uh, and the second at the beginning of this year. So I originally learned about 100 Day Projects from The Great Discontent um, and El Luna, who were hosting kind of a community of doing the project on Instagram. And I wanted to do something focused on type and working with type in a way that I hadn't before. Um, so I wanted to work with expressive type and I felt like I had practice with script lettering. And I felt like I was kind of lacking in like more typeset or straight work. And this project became really an outlet for new things. And so my rules for myself was to always do something in three colors or less and always a square and post on Instagram every day. And through these kind of these 100 day projects, you really quickly realize that all the things that you wanted to make take about 10 days and then you're really in it <laughs> and you have to challenge yourself and direct yourself in new ways. Um, so this project became really hugely varied um, and it started from a turn of phrase or something I'd written um, and it felt like I was getting something out of my system and it was a new canvas each day to try something new. Um, and around this time, I moved to New York City. Uh, I started working at the branding studio Partners in Spade, and I was creating work that I was excited about. But this type practice continued to be an outlet through that time. And a lot of times, I really hated what I'd done. Um, and over time, I realized what was working and what wasn't. And it really just felt like I was getting something out of my system. And it really helped me be more conceptual with my typeset work in a way that I wasn't before. And so that translated into my client work as well. Uh, this project in particular helped me with my work at the New York Times Magazine uh, four years later. Um, so I spent most of 2019 working there. Um, I was learning from people like Gail Bickler and Matt Willey and Ben Granginet. And so every week I got a new story uh, with a new opener to design. And it had a kit of parts where we were using the brand fonts, a photo or illustration, and a headline and a deck. And through this, I really explored how to make the typography respond to the story and respond to the photograph. And I'll go through a couple of examples here. So the first story was a story about holographic concerts. And this is how I started to explore how to show the story through layout. Um, I really wanted the type to feel holographic or digitally altered in some way. Um, and this is kind of how it progressed. 
um, I got a little closer, and this was the end piece, which relied heavily on this kind of expressive type. And these are some details from other spreads. And uh, I'll go through another spread as well um, called Can You Really Be Addicted to Video Games? And I really wanted to do this kind of expressive type approach where I was trying to make the type kind of dialed up and kind of speak to the essence of the story that the photo wasn't quite revealing. And how could the type reference uh, video games, or this like sense of losing yourself to something. So I started working this with this pixelated type of the brand typeface, um, where these pixels were kind of being drawn away from the greater whole. And this was the final piece. And some details from that spread. And I also had a drive to do type in other areas as well. Um, so going back to lettering, um, and when I first moved to New York City, uh, I started working at the Studio Partners in Spain, uh, which is now called Mythology. Um, I really learned a lot from the people there, and I did a lot of lettered logo types. And this uh, client work really helped me push beyond script lettering. Uh, but I continued to do personal work. So this personal work had lettering that was really less script. And um, like I said, working on a lot of brand identities and logo types, I had a lot of killed logos, but I was still kind of attached to the letters. Um, so I started creating larger lettering pieces from those letters that I had created. And I was also inspired to create new lettering pieces from that work that I was doing and creating new forms that were interesting to me. Um, so there was this kind of like dialogue between my work personally and profes professionally uh, where one was influencing the other and both were kind of like helping me uh, go forward. So I'll go through a few examples of how that dialogue reflects in the client work that I did. And that also in turn informed the kind of lettering that I wanted to do. So the first project is called 130 William. Uh, it's a tower in downtown Manhattan. Um, it was designed by David Ajay um, and its most striking feature were these black concrete um, arches uh, that made up the facade of the building. And throughout the building, these arches are really prominent. And I wanted to bring that feeling of the building into the logo itself. So I'll go through kind of how the logo progressed as a lettering piece. Um, and so I really wanted to bring that feeling of this like modern building, like built with all these sensorial arches and reference the forms of the building. And it kept being refined over time. And to be like a little bit more sleeker uh, and a little bit more subtle. And eventually uh, landing on this final piece um, that was really like referencing the forms of the building. And I'll go through another project as well. Um, so this is called Mirror. Um, it's a connected fitness mirror. Um, and for the logo of this project, really wanted it to not be kind of the obvious solution, which is like mirroring the R's and the letters and the word. Um, and so I'll go through kind of how this logo lettering progressed over time. Um, and I, yeah, I really didn't want it to feel like it was C and say, and I really wanted the letter forms to kind of reference what the product is which is like athletic and futuristic and sleek. And this is how it kind of progressed over time and got bolder um, and eventually um, landed on this, this form that was this bold forward leaning type with these sharp cuts in the letter forms. And then another area that I really wanted to 
explore with type um, was type design. Um, I had taken a course uh, on typeface design at the Cooper Union. Um, and with all those lettering pieces that I'd done with um, the time that I was at Partners in Spade, I had a lot of people asking me if those lettering pieces were typefaces, and I'd never really done anything with them. So at the start of 2020, I felt like I had kind of like the space and the time and the drive to, to start creating typefaces out of those old lettering pieces. And I wanted to do another 100 day project because the, that kind of project really helps me uh, focus and move forward. Um, so I started with this typeface called Porphyry. Um, this, these were my first letters of that. And my rules for myself was I could spend 15 minutes or spend hours um, working on this type. And I really wanted it to be a daily practice and not like precious about an individual piece and just doing something a little bit every day. And I also worked on another typeface called Fitzia at the same time. And by day 20, I was really wowed by my progress. Like I had um, all the letters and numbers of two display typefaces already. Um, and I realized I had a lot of days left <laughs> and I was going to have to work on some not so fun things like spacing and some fun things like ligatures and other glyphs, but a lot of retrying and redrawing. Um, so this is kind of how those forms progressed over time. I was always revisiting uh, the letters that I'd done. And around day 50, I got kind of bored. Um, so I added in another typeface that I've called Nolita. Um, and this is how Nolita um, has progressed over time. Um, and right around this time, the pandemic happened and this uh, practice was really kind of my one anchor to that previous life. Um, and just something that I could do every night. Um, and a lot of times I just spend like five, 15 minutes. Sometimes it was nice to escape for a few hours. Um, and I kept going and I finished a hundred days straight of working on these three typefaces. Um, so these are all the glyphs that I made in those typefaces in those hundred days. Um, and this is the current form of those typefaces. And I'm still working on these, um, but I'm really happy with how that kind of daily type practice helped me um, and how it really kind of uh, progressed over time. And I managed to uh, get something I never thought I'd get. Um, and I've really, I've been doing this kind of type driven work for the past nine years. Um, and I really can't get enough. Um, I really love spending extra time on it. And I feel like there's always more to learn. Um, and I'm still improving. Uh, and I look at work from just last year and I see the details that I didn't notice then. Um, I feel like with these 100 days projects, they really allowed me to focus, which is something I really kind of desperately need. Um, and it helps me make clear progress daily. Um, and that personal work has really helped me in my client work as well. So I really want to continue doing this type driven work. Um, I can think of so many things I want to try. Um, and I really want to use type in new and exciting ways, um, both in personal projects and professional projects. So thank you. And um, this is where you can find me online.